Till now we have studied about conversion of Mealy machine to Moore machine using the transition diagrams. Now in this lecture we will be studying about the conversion of Mealy machine to Moore machine using transition table. So here is our example. Convert the given Mealy machine to its equivalent Moore machine. And here we have a Mealy machine given which is a transition table of this Mealy machine and we have to convert this to its equivalent Moore machine. Alright, so as we start, let us check what are the states we have. We have states Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3 and we have inputs A and B and we have outputs zeros and ones. And since this is a Mealy machine, this shows us where the states go on getting input A and B and the outputs that are associated to the transitions of the states. Why is it associated to the transitions? Because it is a Mealy machine. Now, the first step to convert it to a Moore machine is that check these states in the transitions and see if there are any states that gives different kind of outputs for different inputs. Now, what do I mean by that? It will become clear when we take this example. Let's start with state Q0. Search for state Q0 in this column and in this column and find out what are the outputs that they give. So Q0 here is giving output 1 and in this column where is Q0? It is here and it gives the output 1. So Q0 is giving same output in both the columns. So you can leave Q0 as it is and come to state Q1. It is here and it is giving the output 0 and Q1 in this column is giving the output 1. So we see that Q1 is giving different outputs in this column and in this column. So whenever you find a state that is giving two different kind of outputs, then you have to split this state into two states. So we had Q1 and now I will split it into two states, which I will call Q10 and Q11. And why did I split this? That is because this Q10 will be used for output 0 and this Q11 will be used for output 1. Now we are done with Q1. Let's check state Q2. In this column we see that Q2 is giving output 1 and in this column it is giving output 0. So Q2 is also giving two different kind of outputs. So I have to split state Q2 as well. So let me split this state Q2 into two states which I will call state Q20 and state Q21 and this will be used for the output output 0 and this will be used for the output 1. Now let's come to state Q3. Q3 is giving output 0 in this column and in this column also Q3 is giving output 0. So Q3 is giving the same output so no need to change anything for state Q3. Now we see that we have obtained new states when we splitted the states Q1 and Q2. Now using these new states that we have obtained, let us draw the transition table for the Moore machine. So first let us fill up the column for states. So we have states Q0 in the beginning and for Q1, when you come to Q1, you see that Q1 was splitted into two states, Q10 and Q11. So we'll have state Q10 and state Q11. And then state Q2 also was split into two states, Q20 and Q21. Q20 and Q21. And then Q3, nothing was changed in Q3, so we leave Q3 as it is. Now let's see where the states go on getting inputs A and B. And this output column will be filled up later. So first let's do this. Q0 on input A, where does it go? It goes to Q3 giving output 0. It goes to Q3 giving output 0. And on input B it goes to Q1 giving output 1. But we see that Q1 was splitted into two different states. And now I need the Q1 that gives the output 1. So the Q1 which gives output 1 is now Q11. We already said this is the one that will be used for output 1. So instead of Q1 I will use Q11. Q11 and the output it gives is 1. So let's come to Q10. So use this row of Q1 to check for that. Q1 on input A goes to Q0 giving output 1. So we did not make any change for Q0. So I can write it as it is Q0 output 1. 
and on input B it goes to Q3 giving output 0 and Q3 also was not changed so I can write Q3 giving output 0. Now for state Q11 also do the same thing using this state Q1 and you will get the same result it will be exactly the same Q3 0. Now come to state Q20. Now state Q20 can be checked using this row of state Q2. So Q2 on input A it goes to Q2 giving output 1. But we see that Q2 was split to two states and which is the Q2 that gives output 1? It is Q21. So I will write Q21 here because I want the output 1. And here we need the Q2 that gives output 0 which is this one Q20 for output 0. Q20 for output 0. And for 21 also you have to use the same row of Q2 so it will be the same like above Q2 0 0. Now for Q3 come to this row on input A it goes to Q1 giving output 0 and Q1 was split and the Q1 that gives output 0 is this one Q10. So I have to use Q10 here for output 0 and then in input B it goes to Q0 giving output 1 and Q0 was not changed so I will write Q0 1 as it is. Alright so now we have completed the transition part now we have to fill up the outputs. So we know that since this is a Moore machine the output should be associated to the states over here and after we fill up this we can remove these outputs which were written in the transition. Now how do we fill up the column for this output? Now let's first check for state Q0. What will be the output that Q0 gives? Now search for Q0 here. You see Q0 is giving output 1. Q0 is giving output 1 and wherever you find Q0 you see that the output is 1. So the output of Q0 will always be 1. And for Q10, where is Q10 here? It is here giving output 0 and there is no more Q10. So we can say that the output is gives is 0. And Q11, Q11 is over here. It gives output 1. And Q20, Q20 is over here giving output 0. Here also it is giving output 0. So it will always give the same output. That is how we have designed it. And Q21, Q21 is here and also it is here. Both gives the output 1. And Q3, where is Q3? Q3 is here giving output 0. Q3 is also here giving output 0. It is also giving output 0 here. So Q3 gives output 0. So now we have filled up the output column for the Moore machine. Now we can remove these outputs which were given in the transition because this is a Moore machine. So let's remove that. So now we have removed the outputs that were associated to the transitions and we have associated the outputs to the states now. Now this becomes a complete transition table for the Moore machine. So here we have successfully converted the Milli machine to the Moore machine using the transition table. So I hope this was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.